Well, happy Saturday. Are you there? Are you sleeping in? <laughs> Some of you are uh, in the East and it's afternoon. Some of you are in Europe. Some of you are in South America, New Zealand, Norway, China, uh, and just all over the world. I am so pleased to have you here. Those of you who are on the uh, West Coast of the United States might be a little early for you on a Saturday, but today is Superstar Saturday, which I'll explain to you in just a minute. My name is Eric Rhodes, and I am the publisher of found, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. publisher and founder of Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, Plen Air Magazine, and uh, the newsletters, Plen Air Today, Fine Art Today, Realism Today, and American Watercolor. We also do the Plein Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. And on that note, we're doing a giveaway. You get to pick your seat. That sounds a little dirty, doesn't it? Okay, so you get to, <laughs> you get to pick if you want to go to the Plein Air Convention or the Figurative Art Convention. And the way we're going to do that is you go to StreamlineGiveaway.com. Now, it looks backwards on Instagram. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. All right, so StreamlineGiveaway.com. You only need to enter one time. Somebody asked yesterday on the comments, can I enter multiple times? It won't do you any good. We, um, we, we're, we're supposed to just get one, and then there will be a random generator that will pick the name. And so please just enter one time, but enter. Make sure you enter. And if you've been watching these videos, uh, and you are, are new to painting, and you're like, well, should I even go to these things? I got an email yesterday, or a, maybe it was a comment yesterday, from somebody who said, I don't know if I'm qualified to go to these things. Well, you are qualified, baby. You're qualified, because we, everybody at every level comes. Let me give you an example. Uh, we have, uh, at my publisher's invitationals, uh, we have one coming up July 28th in the Adirondacks, which is a painting retreat. Uh, there are people there who are painting together that are at every level. I've had people who literally had never painted before, people who had never painted plein air before, and you know, you've got the spread of people who are hobbyists and professionals, and we all just hang together. And Charlie Hunter said it best, and that is that we are one when we're there. We are not, there's no superstars. There may be some superstar painters there, some pretty well-known painters there, and, but we just all kind of hang out together and, and uh, paint together and have fun, and that's what it's really all about. So, and, and at the Plen Air Convention, we do this thing uh, called the Plen Air Basics Course, and we have literally thousands and thousands of people who are learning about Plen Air because of this movement. The Plen Air Podcast is reaching a huge number of people now, and so there are a lot of people who are curious. They want to try it. They want to see what it's like. Uh, they want to learn all about it maybe before they commit. So you can go to a pre-convention basics course and that walks you through all the stuff that'll save you about two or three years of experimentation and time. And I created that because I was the guy that burned through two or three years of experimentation. So we walk through the processes of painting, how it's different from indoors versus outdoors, what kind of easels there are, what kind of choices there are. We give you the all the details on do you want to be a watercolorist, oil painter, pastel painter, gouache painter, acrylic painter, etc. And we have people doing demonstrations in each of those disciplines for you. And then at the plein air convention, when we all go out, every day we all go outside to paint in a beautiful location. And uh, we have, if you're in the beginner's course, we have a series of mentors. Those people who are teaching are going out with you and they're with you the whole week. That way, they're kind of there to hold your hand, give you advice, uh, get you through it, so you don't feel a little uncomfortable. So anyway, any level is welcome. So if you want to enter to win, go to StreamlineGiveaway.com. My company is Streamline, Streamline Art Video, so StreamlineGiveaway.com uh, before June 30th. All right. I should mention, because every single day, including yesterday, I was watching the comments and new people had stumbled in, and so please, here's the deal. Uh, my name is Eric Rhodes with an A. Somebody spelled it yesterday, R-O-A-D-S. It's R-H-O-A-D-S. And you can find me on Instagram or, or uh, Twitter or, or, or Facebook, uh, everything, right? Uh, uh, Facebook. 
and I'm Eric Rhodes on Facebook or Eric Rhodes Publisher on Facebook. Now, the, the personal page, I can't follow you back, but you can follow me, and, and that's only because I don't have enough follower spaces. We do every day, including today, Superstar Saturday, we do every day through this coronavirus quarantine time, many of you are still stuck, uh, we on YouTube or Facebook, you go to the account called Streamline Art Video. You just Google that, or, or not Google it, but you put it in the search and Streamline Art Video on YouTube or Facebook. And then that's where you find the videos every day. We have been doing now, today is, to, excuse me, day number 73, every day continuously putting videos out there. Now we're doing two per day because people want to get caught up. And so we, and we also wanted to do different time zones. And so we're doing a, a video at 3 p.m. every day and at 9 p.m. every day. That way different time zones can see it at different times. Now today, Superstar Saturday, we have two great ones for you. At 3 p.m., we have the amazing Juliet Aristides. Now you've probably seen the four, five, six books that she's written on classical painting and they're big sellers and she is so delightful and such a great instructor. And uh, we have her this year on stage at the FACE conference. Not only is she doing a demo at the conference, but she also is doing a pre-convention or pre-conference uh, workshop on drawing. And if you want to learn to draw, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that. We also have the amazing Tony Ryder. Anthony Ryder is kind of like uh, way, way up here, been around forever teaching this classical style of painting. And so Tony Ryder's doing a pre-convention workshop as well. Andy's on the stage. And if you go to, to, the, to the website, which is um, figurativeartconvention.com, sorry about my messy graphics, this is real life, baby. Uh, figurativeartconvention.com, you can see all the faculty, but we got Rose Franson, we got Virgil Elliott, we got Mary White. I mean, Mary White is like, wow. This is, this, so many good painters are gonna be there to teach you. That's October in Baltimore. And of course, we have a COVID guarantee. If it's not safe for you, if you feel uncomfortable, if for whatever reason, you know, the state tells us we can't do it or we can't, if we have to cut down the number of people, uh, we're going to go to the ones who've registered last and cut them back. Hopefully we won't have to do that. But if any of those circumstances, if you get canceled, you get your money back. Okay. And that's true with the, uh, the Adirondack event, which by the way, yesterday we sold 18 seats to it. We're getting near our limit. Um, the, uh, it's fall color week. It's true for, um, the plein air convention and it's true for the figurative art convention. Plein Air Convention, you want to learn about the faculty there. Again, another amazing faculty. It's plenairconvention.com. It's going to be in Santa Fe this August. And we normally don't do summertime conventions. We do it like spring training, right? We try to do it in, in early spring, usually around tax day. And, and it was supposed to be in Denver, but now we've had to move it to Santa Fe. And again, we're not going if it's not safe. And uh, we plan to be there. Everybody tells us it's going to be fine. But we will wait until the very last minute to make a determination, probably a couple weeks before. Uh, but we have contracts and stuff that we have to fulfill. So, you know, we get stuck if we have to cancel. So that's not good. If, you, uh, if you're interested in the Publishers Invitational, it's publishersinvitational.com. Now behind me is a house, and I'm gonna to talk to you about the foundational principles of marketing for an artist and building your art career. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Uh, today we have some prizes. First off, yesterday I kind of went nuts and I gave away three prizes. And so today's prize winners, the first one is a, figure to, uh, a fine art connoisseur sub. And that goes to Ray and Chris, Ray Christina Richardson, right? It's probably Ray and Christina Richardson in North Carolina. Next we have a, a value specs, which are the red, red glasses that help you see values. Uh, and the value specs go to Jeannie Blanco in Puerto Rico. All right, Jeannie. And then next, uh, another pair of value specs go to D. Miller in Idaho. Baby, you're gonna be styling in Idaho, I'm just saying, right? So today, I'm gonna give away, I don't even have one here. I can't even believe it. Uh, I kind of packed up my stuff. So I'm gonna give away an easel brush clip, which you can clip on and it holds your brushes. 
and I'm going to give away another pair of value specs. And that comes from commenting on any of the platforms I'm on. Make sure you comment <coughs> live or later, and that way uh, you can win that. Now, uh, today at 3, I said is Juliet Aristides. What I didn't say is today at 9 is Joseph McGurl. Uh, painting light and atmosphere. So th these are two superstars. This is really great stuff. We thought maybe because it's Saturday, a lot of you have been working this week, and so we wanted to give you an opportunity to have more, uh, more great stuff to see. So today, make sure you tune in. Both of these are going to be really awesome. Now, I want to talk about foundations, but first, a sip of water. Oh, it's gone. Ah, oh, it's gone. <laughs> well... All right, so let's talk about foundations. Um, in everything that you do in your art career, there are certain foundational principles that you need to stick with. And, and I was thinking this morning, uh, what are those foundational principles? So I decided I'd do it in a little house. And the idea is that you have to, you have to do things in order. Uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, Maslow and the, the basic needs and then the next needs and so on. You can't do anything if the basic needs are met. Well, the same thing in, in your art marketing business. If, if you are an artist and you're selling paintings and you're trying to make a living from it, you have a business. Whether or not you want to be called a business person, you can call yourself whatever you want, but there are principles that if you follow, it will be better. I was watching a thread last night, somebody on an art marketing forum, and it was talking about how you know, he put up a website and he got uh, his website done. He spent a bunch of money on his website and he had no visitors. And so he said, well, I, I'm going to buy ads on Instagram. So he bought a bunch of ads on Instagram and he had no visitors. And he said, and this was really disturbing. He said, I'm so discouraged. I'm not sure I'm going to continue selling my art. We don't ever want to get to that place. I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the one who has to return to a job that I don't love, right? I had, uh, I've had a lot of jobs that I, I love and I've had a lot of jobs that I don't love. And we all have to learn, but I had this boss, he, he would scream at me, he would scream at everybody, he would throw stuff, uh, he was vulgar, he was disgusting. and. I remember one time he got really mad and he picked up, this was back in the days when people smoked, he had a, a glass ashtray and his assistant walked in and she did something he didn't like and she, he screamed at her and he hurled that ashtray at her. Now he intentionally didn't try to hit her, but he was going for effect and that thing shattered against the wall. You know, you don't want to go back to a job you don't love. and. Or maybe it's a job that you love, but you're just done with it. I know a lot of people who, who uh, get our videos, who are in professional p positions. I, I know a lot of doctors, heart surgeons, uh, lawyers, uh, you know, everything. Who, and and, and uh, I, as a matter of fact, I know of one that was uh, like an FBI agent. It's like, I love my job, but I don't want to do that anymore. I want to paint. But you don't want to have to, if, if you don't have a retirement or you don't have an income and you're trying to make your living as a painter, you don't want to have to return to something you don't love. And I, I, you know, my big fear in life, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with this. It's just that, you know, my fear of failure, we all have fears of failure. My fear of failure is what drives me is I don't want to have to go when I'm, you know, 80 years old and run out of money. I don't want to have to go and become a Walmart greeter. Of course, Walmart won't be in business by then because nobody in retail will be in business, I'm guessing. So um, anyway, that, that's by the way, that's a long, long, a long, long time from now, although time travels very quickly. Okay, so let's talk about the foundations of your house. Now, I'm going to tell you the foundational principles, all right? And the first one is your basement. The basement is the true foundation here. And the, the basement is being ready. What does that mean, being ready? What being ready means is that if your artwork isn't up to snuff and you're going to go out there and start marketing it, that's probably a bad idea. Now, I will tell you 
that a good marketer, a really good marketer, can market anything and can sell anything, and including, and you and I have both seen it, we've seen paintings, we've seen paintings sell for big, big dollars, millions of dollars, and we're like, I don't understand how that could sell. I, you know, and, and then there's the banana with the piece of duct tape, and, and, and a lot of us are like, I don't, well, I don't understand why that sold so much money. But I think a good practice is having a good foundation, making sure that you're ready. I would never, ever suggest that you should go out there until your paintings are ready. Now, there, there are ways to know that. We've talked about those ways in the past. You have to get outside third-party opinions, but make sure your work is ready. Now, a lot of you will stay in that basement forever and never come out of the basement. And that is because you're just constantly telling yourself you're not ready. That's also a bad idea. Okay, so make sure that you're ready. This, the next thing is you have to set your goals. I hope somebody's writing this down. You have to have goals. Now, I get calls all the time. People ask me to, to coach them. People ask me to do their marketing for them. I, and I always say no because I just don't have the time to do it. I love doing it. But I, I get calls all the time and people say, well, should I, should I advertise in Facebook or should I do Instagram or should I do LinkedIn or should I be in Fine Art Connoisseur or should I be in Plein Air or, sh you know, what should I do? And I always say, what are your goals? And they go, well, uh, I, I want to make a living as an artist. Okay, so I want you to get out a deposit slip right now, pull your checkbook out. And on that deposit slip, on the where it says amount, I want you to put in make a living. Look, you cannot make a goal without a defined, specific, measurable number. Okay? So, I want to make a living as an artist. I always say, well, what does that mean to you? <clears throat> well, I want to make $10 million. All right, how much are you making now? Nothing. All right. So you want to go from, to, from zero to $10 million. That's great. How, how much time? When do you want to do that? Oh, eventually. Again, you can't take eventually and take it to the bank, right? So you've got to put a number to it. All right. You want to be at $100,000 a year in two years or three years? Then write that down. Now, there are big gaps, and you can do things when there are big gaps, but it's big leaps, and big leaps are harder than small leaps. So what I try to do is ask you to eat the elephant one bite at a time. If you have a big goal, that's great. I love big goals. I think you have to have big goals, and they're not just financial goals, by the way. They're, what is your goal to change the world? So you need to define my goals. <clears throat> my goals, <clears throat> what are my financial goals? What are my life goals? What are the things I want to get done? What are my life changing goals? How do I want to change other people's lives? What's the big thing that's going to get me the most excited? What are my family goals? You know, I want to be able to visit my grandchildren three times a year in person, or I want to be able to fly, I want to be able to fly to Bora Bora to do painting. You know, whatever your goals are, you got to lay them all out. And then you've got to put measurable pieces to it. Now, we'll do another thing on goals one day. The next part of your foundation is strategy. <clears throat> Most people confuse strategy with tactics. Strategy is uh, who you're going after, why you're going after them, and how you specifically believe that you need to address them. You know, it's your messaging, it's who you're talking to, it's, and, and that applies, by the way, to what you do. You might not think it does, but it very much does. So what is your strategy? And then, on top of strategy, you go, what is my tactic? Now, a tactic is, I want to do a direct mail piece. I want to put flyers on cars. I want to do advertising. I want to have art shows. Uh, those are tactics. You First off, before you define the tactics, because if you're advertising and you don't know who you're talking to and you don't know what your message is, 
you're throwing your money away because you first got to know who that is. You got to have your strategy. Okay, on top of tactics now, this is a big one, action. <clears throat> you have to take action. I, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've encountered who come up with goals, they come up with a, st a strategy, they come up with their tactics, and then they never take action. Now, there are reasons sometimes people don't take action, like for instance, they don't have the money, right? So if you don't have the money and you need the money to, to do your advertising or do your direct mail or whatever it is, then you have to put that amount of money into your goals. All right, so before you can, it, maybe you say, all right, I wanna to get to $100,000 in, in income, but you also have to look at this process and say, all right, how much money realistically do I need to spend every year to be able to accomplish those goals? And if you realize that money spent can be very effective for you, then you have to say, okay, well, how do I first get that money? And so you might say, well, I have to work some overtime at the post office, or I have to I have to do some side jobs because I got to earn enough money because you've got to be able to get your advertising done and you have to be able to sustain it. All right. The next piece of this is consistent action. What that means, consistent action means that action, uh, I, I've told this story before. But let's say, for instance, that, uh, well, I had this, I, 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 was, I wanted to go with this magazine. It had a lot of really, really rich people who were interested in art. It was a, an auction publication. And I called them up, I said, how much are ads? And they said, $18,000 for an ad. I said, okay, I'll get back to you. So I sat around with my team and I talked about it and I said, okay, I wanna, I wanna use this to build subscriptions. So they said, you're crazy. $18,000 for a single ad to get subscriptions, you'd have to sell, you know, I don't know the number, 500 subscriptions, 5,000 subscriptions, and then you're not gonna even make any money on them. So they all said it's a bad idea, plus they said, you teach us that one ad never works. Very rarely ever works, right? I said, well, it's gonna work in this case. And everybody said, don't do it, don't do it. Well, I, you know, my arrogance was, I'm going to do it because there have been times when I've been right, when I have challenged everybody. The plein air convention was one of those times. Everybody's like, don't do it, don't do it. And I did it and it worked. But in this case, I spent the $18,000. I sold exactly two subscriptions. My ad was awful. I didn't have the repetition. It's about consistent action. You know, when you're advertising, for instance, you have to you have to make a lifetime commitment. You say to yourself, I'm gonna be in business for the next 10 years or the next 20 years. You have to say, all right, I'm gonna take X percentage of all of my uh, targeted money and I'm gonna take that towards advertising. That's what I do. I take, you know, in, in some cases, some products as, as high as 30 or 40%. Now I can't sustain that because I wouldn't make any money, but to get certain attention levels and then to convert those people to customers. So you have to have consistent action. The next thing is success. All right, success comes from consistent action. This is where you start making some money, you start getting some commissions, you start getting in some of the galleries and things like that. And then what happens typically, we get a little success and we think, all right, this is great, I got a bunch of money, but you, you have to realize that you, you gotta keep it going. <clears throat> Once you get success, it's like, imagine you go buy a lottery ticket and you, and you win, and let's say it's a $10,000 prize, and you say, okay, hey, I got $10,000, and then all of a sudden you spend it and you realize I can't live on that for the rest of my life, so you go buy another lottery ticket and it never works again. So you have to have some kind of way to have sustainable success, and that comes through repetition. Repetition 
uh, is one of the keys to all marketing. You have to have repetition in everything you do. Most of us think, I can't, I, I don't want to be repeating that much. But I'll tell you something. I've been on this now for 73 days in a row. I have been here every day for 73 days. That repetition has resulted in exposing what we do to tens of thousands of people that we never reached before. Now, will those people ever come to our conferences or become customers? Hard to know, some of them might, but it's that repetition that has built this, right? So you get that? And then uh, on top of repetition, let's just, uh, let's make you on top of your house and you're like celebrating and on top of repetition is reputation. When you go through this process, you go from being ready, setting your goals, building your strategy, creating your tactics, taking action, taking consistent action, meaning over and again, and then you get to success and then you just keep repeating it. You just keep cranking the machine, you keep feeding the machine. Then you get to the point where you have a reputation. And what happens is there's a thing in marketing called momentum. And when you get momentum, it's going to allow you to build a bigger house, right? Because you have a reputation. Now, you have to uphold your reputation. You know, you have to be, I, I believe you have to be ethical. You have to do things right. You have to do things properly. You have to treat people well. You have to treat your galleries well, etc. Because the minute that you get a bad reputation here, your house comes down. I've seen it happen so many times in my career. I've watched people become really great, become really successful, and then become these giant jerks. There may be another word I would normally use, but I won't use it today. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like nobody wants them to succeed anymore. Part of the reason that you succeed is because you treat people well and you help them. And, and my goal is, I'm, I'm always saying to people, how can I help you? What can I do for you? How can I get you to the next level? What's it gonna take to, to help you move up because I know if I help them they'll probably remember that but it's not the only reason I mean it's just in my nature to help them but if you build people up on your way up uh, you'll get higher faster you'll get momentum I think it's always important to tell other people your goals that's why I've told you guys on this broadcast a few days ago that I'm gonna build a museum I'm gonna build a, a big big city museum, kind of like the Isabel Stewart Gardner Museum. That's what I'm envisioning. One side for plein air and the other side for realism. And, and that is something that the two passions that I have. And so, uh, because I want to make sure those things get proper notice in a big city. All I need is a big donor who is willing to write a check and, and maybe we'll put their name on it or something like that. So, the idea here is that you want to build a reputation so that you become really good, but your house can tear down if you, if you fail to continue these processes. You see, the key to any really good business is you start out with what we call a hand crank, right? You're grinding away. You're grinding away. In the beginning, it's like, oh, you ever ride a bicycle up the hill and you're like, oh, and you're grinding and you're grinding, and you're getting momentum, and you're getting momentum, and you're getting momentum. Think of it as churning out a, you know, a printing press, printing out money, and you're grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. And you're starting to develop a really big muscle because you're grinding. That means you're getting smarter, you're getting better. The problem is, at some point, you can't grind anymore because there's too much to do. There's so much going on. So what you have to do when you start getting up here you have to start building out a whole different way of, of thinking. So you have to build a, what I call a machine, right? So I have a machine. I have a machine which is several people on, in my organization. Unfortunately, I had to cut some of them loose with this recession. But the machine is that they know their jobs and they're hand cranking in their areas and we have certain processes that that become automated, you know, like some of the financial stuff and things like that. So. It makes it so you're not just doing this all the time. And then once you get a machine, then your house becomes a skyscraper. Now, I don't have a skyscraper. I'm not suggesting that, but I don't want a skyscraper. So, and, and by the way, your goals, your financial goals and your life goals 
are not always about money. You know, I'm not an always about money guy. Now, I, I want to have enough money to put my kids through college and to have a little left over so Lori and I can continue to live a decent life. I don't need the big mansion. I don't need the Bentley and the Learjet or whatever the jet is today, Gulfstream. So I'm looking for quality of life. I have experienced, I have a lot of friends who've gone the other route and I don't want their lives. I mean, they've got a lot of really cool stuff. I got to admit, I have a friend of mine uh, asked me to come up for a meeting and he sent the jet to get me. And I, you know, here I am, I'm sitting in this jet and I'm feeling pretty cool, you know, and, and that was a, a, a nice thing. But you know, I also know that his life is tough. It's super, super tough. And, and that's not the life I want. I want to have time to paint. I want to have time to hang out with my family. And so, um, and, and you know, he's a good family guy. I'm not suggesting that. But, uh, and he's figured out a machine. I mean, he's got a machine that's just really cranking it out. So anyway, we all have different goals and your goals may have nothing to do with money. They may have everything to do with family or with painting or with travel or, or with spiritual or, you know, you name it. All right. So anyway, uh, the basement is you got to be ready. Then you set your goals. Then you make your strategy. Then you figure out your tactics. Then you take action. And then you have to take consistent action before you hit success. And once you hit success, you have to keep repeating the process. You have to constantly be resetting your goals. You have to constantly be reworking things because we get, uh, we get to points where we're stuck. I mean, the best part about this, uh, what was called a recession, they said yesterday it's the shortest recession in history because the numbers have shot back up. And, uh, but the best part about being quarantined for two months is that my business was doing this and I had to completely reinvent myself and I came up with some ideas and my team came up with some ideas that are better than any of the ideas. As a matter of fact, we're going to announce something probably Monday, maybe Tuesday. We're going to announce something that is so cool we've never done before and everybody's scrambling to get it ready so we can announce it. So anyway, I, uh, I think that's all I got today. I want to remind you today at 3 p.m. Juliet Aristides, and you get that at Streamline Art Video on Facebook or YouTube, and it's Juliet Aristides at 3 and Joseph McGurl at 9, and I'll be checking in on the comments on this later, reading the comments. I got some stuff to do now, but uh, I'll get to it later. Uh, make sure you leave comments because comments are how you win prizes, okay, because we randomly choose from all the comments and all the platforms. I'm going to come up real quickly, see the screens. And yay, a new announcement. Yay, Mary, you're going to love this one. Mary, I know Mary is going to love it. I know, and Marilyn's going to love it, and Sarah's going to love it, and Chris is going to love it, and Karen is going to love it. Okay, you guys are making a lot of comments. You YouTubers don't make a lot of comments, and so maybe the comments are disabled. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that. Instagram guys, thank you for all the thumbs up. And... Uh, is the house overlooking the river where the money is flowing? <laughs> yeah, you want to build your skyscraper. Over, uh, you want to build it on your own private island where you're overlooking the ocean where the money is flowing. That's funny. You guys, it's nice to know you guys listen. All right. Have a terrific day. God bless you. Make sure that you keep your head in the right place. Uh, and make sure that uh, tomorrow morning... Uh, you, you check out Sunday Coffee. Uh, I, have, um, I have some thoughts about what's going on right now, and I'm going to share some of that tomorrow morning on Sunday Coffee. Now, Sunday Coffee is my blog. I do it every Sunday morning. It's a quarter million people who read it, and it is, uh, it's not necessarily about art. Sometimes I talk about art, but it's stuff that I wanted to impart upon my kids and I shared it with a friend. He said, hey, would you share it with everybody? And I started doing that, and it kind of exploded. So uh, anyway, uh, you can find it at coffeewitheric.com. And let me, uh, well, I won't write it down, coffeewitheric.com. And then you go in and hit the subscribe button. It'll come to you in your email. And make sure when it comes to you the first time, if you're not seeing it, look in your spam because uh, I get thrown in there sometimes and if it's in the spam you can pull it out and mark it that you read it that way it'll keep coming to you. Market is important 
and then it comes to you every week. So, uh, and I love your comments, make your comments on there. So um, keep your head positive, get your head out of this. I was talking to my wife this morning and she said, oh, you know, I'm just, this is so breaking my heart. Breaking my heart is breaking all of our hearts. And, and there's so many different levels of it and so many different thoughts and so many different opinions, but also so much vitriol. And we, we have to escape that. We have to, we have to acknowledge, we have to understand, but we also have to escape it because if you keep your heads in it all the time, you're going to go nuts. So get your head out of it once in a while. Don't just sit there and watch the news. Go do something productive. Go have some fun. Go do some painting. Go watch a painting video and do what I do, right? I crank up the music and I dance around in my studio and it's just completely silly. But you know what? It helps get my head. You know, the other day I was just feeling really, really down for, for the afternoon. I came in and I went out to my studio and I put my, my, pulled my iPhone out and I got my little speaker and I just started getting into it. And it just helped. It, it just changed my endorphins and changed, changed my mood. Have a terrific day and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.